Hi, Erwan for Motion VFX. In this tutorial, we will learn how to customize the M Tracker 3D presets with your own content. Here are some examples with customized presets that you can use directly inside Final Cut Pro. You will be able to add 3D iPad Pro on your shot, some snow for your Christmas video, or use replicators to create your own 3D logo. And you can go beyond by customizing plugins like a message to fit inside M Tracker 3D presets. Okay, let's start with the first example and see how the preset works. First, you will need to use MTracker 3D to extract the camera's motion from the video clip. To do so, I will get MTracker 3D inside the filters library and drag it on my clip. I will click on track. The analysis will take five minutes. Okay, the analysis is done. Let's add the preset. I will open the titles library and look at the MTracker 3D folder. You can see that Motion VFX provides many contents like captions, drop zones, particles, pointers, and USDZ 3D models. Let's add the 3D models to see how it works. I will get the microscope as I would like to get it on the table. First, I will select the clip and in the inspector, I will copy the track by clicking on the blue button. Then I will select my microscope preset and paste the 3D data. OK, so now I will be able to select the right position by clicking on the target icon and click on the right place on the table. The microscope is too big, so I will adjust the scale parameter. With the parameters available directly inside the inspector, I can quickly modify the colors to match with the background. OK, that's nice, but how to add a 3D object that is not part of the list, as an iPad, for example? I will delete the microscope and select any 3D elements, like the car, for example. I will do a right click, and you can see that we have four options. The last two will be the most important for us. As you can see, you will be able to open the preset inside Motion. So it means that all the presets are motion projects that you can modify. So it means that almost every motion project can be used as a M-Tracker 3D preset. Let's see how it works. I will click on Reveal in Finder. So you will see the path of the preset. Motion templates. Titles, M Tracker 3D, USDZ models, transportations, car. And we can see that the preset is a motion project with a USDZ 3D models of the car. Let's duplicate this preset. I will rename it iPad Pro. I will also rename the motion project to iPad Pro. To match with the folder hierarchy, I will create a folder named USDZ Models Electronics. OK, so now I will open the iPad Pro project in motion. Let's have a look at the project. So we have the project layer, the rig, and the lights. If we look at the camera, we can see that the camera is controlled by Link's behaviors. So it's very important to not modify these parameters if you want to be able to work with MTracker 3D. In the content track group, you will also find some link behaviors and MTracker 3D lens distortion. Again, do not modify any of these elements. On the other hand, there is a group named content group, and this one will be very important as it contains all the elements we need to modify. Inside, you will find the USDZ 3D model of the car,
So I would like to replace the car by an iPad. I will click on the import button, select my USDZ iPad model and click on the import button. USDZ 3D model can be downloaded from various websites, like Sketchfab, for example. I will deactivate the car and the shadow group, as we don't need them anymore. I will center the iPad and reduce the size inside the inspector. I can use the perspective view to show you the 3D model. For this specific project, I will remove the car and the shadow group, but you can also use and adjust the built-in shadow from this preset. I will create my own shadow by using a rectangle. I will place it below the iPad. I will adjust the color and play with the feather value to add some softness on the edges. I will need to reset the Z position of the rectangle and readjust the position. OK, perfect. Before saving, it would be great to be able to control the shadow in Final Cut Pro. It's very simple. In the inspector, I will ask to publish the position, the scale and the opacity parameters. If you click on the project layer, you will see that the three parameters are now available. Let's save the preset. In the file menu, I will select Save As. First, I will select the M-Tracker 3D category and create a new theme. I will use the one I've created earlier. I will save a preview and name the preset iPad Pro. Then, I will click on Publish. If we come back to Final Cut Pro, we can see that we have our new category with our new iPad Pro preset. This preset can be used on any video with M-Tracker 3D. So I can use it on my clip. As it is the M-Tracker 3D preset, we will be able to paste the track data on it. I will select the position of the iPad with a 3D axis. I will quickly adjust the position of the iPad on the table. And adjust the light controls. To adjust the shadow, I will use the parameters I've published before. I will need to do a color correction to match with the background. As it is a title effect, I need to create a cop and clip of it, as I don't want to affect the video background by the color correction. I will use the color wheel to add a light green tint and the U saturation curves to reduce the saturation on the blue. To complete my effect, I will group my two layers with a new cup on clip in order to add an overall look. I will use the country preset from MFIM look. I will adjust the letterbox, the grain, the lens blur and the basic adjustments. And it's done. Let's see the final result. For the next example, I've got a nice clip for a Christmas project. But to get a nice atmosphere, I would like to add some snow falling. Inside the M-Tracker 3D titles, there are some particles like dust, fog or random particles. Let's see how we can create our own Snow M-Tracker 3D Particles preset. Like the previous example, I will reveal the preset in the Finder. I will duplicate it and rename the folder, but also the motion project as Snow. And finally, I will open the Snow motion project. Inside the project, we have almost the same organization. 
to see the particles, I will deactivate the title background group. I will open the content track group and look at the content group. Inside, we can see the fog particle emitter. I will use a perspective view to show you that it's a 3D effect. So I will delete this fog group and deactivate the colorize effect. Motion provides over 200 particles emitters. In the nature folder, we will find three different snow particles emitters. I will get the first one and drag it inside the content group. First, I will reset the position and the rotation values. and adjust the Y position. In the emitter tab, we will be able to adjust the snow. First, I will switch the shape from line to rectangle. With this modification, the particles will be generated from this rectangle. I will increase by 10 the size of the rectangle. I would like to randomize the position, so I will switch the arrangement parameter to random fill. In the properties tab, I will rotate by 90 degrees the rectangle. and I will move the rectangle up to be sure to be over the camera. But we have a problem as the particles stay inside the rectangle. To resolve this, we have to go back to the emitter tab. I will activate the 3D mode. And now we have our 3D snow. We can modify the emission angles, the numbers of the particles and the speed. In the color mode, I will use the colorize parameter and modify the attached to emitter parameter to 100. We have almost finished. I will just publish few parameters to get control on the snow inside Final Cut Pro. I will publish the colorized parameter to be able to change the color of the snow. I will also publish the birth rate, the scale and the speed parameters. In the inspector, you can rearrange the order of the parameters. I don't need anymore the colorized filter inside the project, so I will delete it. One last important detail, if we go to the first frame, it will be the beginning of the particles, so it is why there are no particles. To get the snow at frame 1, I will use a mini timeline and trim the content group to the left. Then I will modify the out point to increase the duration. We are good now, so I just have to save the project and it's done. Back in Final Cut Pro, the snow preset will appear in the particles category. So I can drag it over my clip. I've already applied MTracker 3D on my clip and I've also already done the analysis. So I just need to copy and paste the track data to the snow preset. As you can see, depending on the position of the 3D axis, it will change the position of the snow. I will adjust some parameters like the color, the blur and the scale. I will select both elements and create a new compound clip. I will add a default MFIM look preset 
and add some letterbox and a lot. Let's check the result. As you just seen, it is possible to create your own M-Tracker 3D presets. Presets that you can use on multiple projects. Almost any project coming from Motion can be integrated with M-Tracker 3D inside Final Cut Pro. But also, Motion VFX provides more presets with expansion packs like Captions Pack, Pointers Pack, and titles pack, and there are more to come. So don't hesitate and visit the Motion VFX website to see all the various M-Tracker 3D expressions pack available. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get tips and tricks on M-Tracker 3D. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye.